Hey guys, Jonesy here, CKC Garage. We got Zach Mann and Kid Drift here, and normally we'd be racing this weekend, but it got canceled. Um, again, we don't really mess with these Power Wheels things, but our racing season's just about over. So we said, what the heck? We gotta do something in the winter here. So from Big Toys Green Country, we ordered this supercar XXL. And according to the specs, it looks like basically it's kind of a miniature golf cart. 10 miles an hour, 200 pound weight capacity. It's got a brushless motor. Um, I can't wait to see the transaxle in the back, kind of like a gol uh, golf cart. So uh, without further ado, we're gonna have this opened up and we're gonna pop this open and see what you guys get. And there she is. Is it fully assembled? Looks pretty big. What's all in there, guys? Pretty thick. We got some side mirrors and four hubcaps, it looks like. Don't just throw the foam away like he was going to do because uh, there is other stuff. Okay. Steering wheel. Seat backs. Oh, we got the keys. Keys to the car. Who's going to be the first one to drive it? What else we got here? Looks like some kind of battery plug port. So. Here's the charger. We're probably not going to use it. We'll go into that in other videos. Is that a handbrake? Yes, it's got a handbrake. It's got this brakes. So then it's got the stock charger with a coaxial plug that plugs into here. It should. Man, that fits a tight fit. We're going to find out where this goes. And the steering wheel itself is very much like a bicycle. It's got this cam bolt on the, or nut on the bottom. So you gotta, as you tighten it up, it, it slides up and puts pressure on the sides. So, decent steering wheel. It's not like a regular Power Wheels one. It feels a lot sturdier. Oh, we got some instructions. So, you guys, you need to, need to read a little bit. Like All right, so this is what it looks like, guys. Fully assembled in the box as far as, uh, like, front bumper and back bumper you don't have to put on. Um, you have to do the seat back. It looks like the charge port. But we're going to go ahead and pick this beast up. And uh, I don't know. Maybe we'll put it on a couple uh, jack stands or something. Okay, I figured we were going to have to put on wheels, but it looks like the tires are already on. They're like a low profile uh, pneumatic. I can see the uh, valve stem here, so that actually they take air. Um, man, I can't wait to look underneath this thing's hood. Right now, I'm just going over and looking at the body, make sure it's not damaged or dinged up. Yeah, I think we need, these kids could barely pick it up on the front, so that was kind of a disaster trying to get it out of the box, but I think we're going to get some more help and put it up on a workbench so that we can uh, talk about this thing. I really, just first impressions, it's actually got sparkles in it. It's not just a flat red it's actually got metallic paint interesting this must be paint then i do see some um like residue from packaging the styrofoam we'll have to see if that comes off we'll just like glass cleaner all right um so check it out guys i mean you're seeing this first time just like us so here's like a socket it says Oh. what that means 
that's where the charge port goes. I don't know. This is the um, forward and reverse. This will be high speed, low speed, I think. Is it actually in there? Oh, I do know what that other part is. So that's the actual charge port. And then this is an auxiliary one. So like if you take it out of the car, you can still charge it. So can you pull that off? It goes right in there. And then you plug plug that into there, plug that into the wall. But I'm sure that the battery's disconnected. They always do that. But check it out, guys. It's got a variable speed throttle here. Yeah, it's got a real brake. It's got a handbrake. And the button on top, just like the car, that releases it. Maybe we could do some um, re-engineering here and put this in the center here for like a drift. Drift brake? Would that be sweet? Yeah. Oh man, so what's going on with the doors here? How do you open the door? Oh, so it's got a little lever you gotta actually pull forward. So it's got, it's got working doors. Let's look under the hood, huh? Let's see how we get that guy open. Yeah, we need a screwdriver. Or a coin. All right, so we're gonna pop this hood here and see what's underneath here. So, it's kind of spring-loaded here. And it's got two little hood latches. Hold that up. Okay, so under the hood, which is got this weird residue. I don't know if that's like a mold release. But anyways, you pop the hood and it's got this, looks like a dual 12 volt, 12 amp hour battery pack. And this is the brushless connector that goes from the big old controller, which it says it's 24 volt DC. Uh, I don't see how many amps. Oh, yeah, that's low. Rated current, 20 amps. That's kind of low. But anyways, uh, here's the battery connector, which does have a little bit of nicking to it, but go ahead and plug that in. So you gotta plug the battery in, and then you gotta turn the key on. So you put the key in the, turn it on. Oh. Maybe it's because the charge port's in. So you can't have the charger in because it um, has a relay, I bet. So first time starting it up, it's got some sounds. It's got some cool car sounds. Hit the gas pedal a little bit because I don't know what it's going to do on the box here. Oh, it's binding up on the box. So here it is. On the ground, just got out of the box. Not real impressed with the stance of it. That's a huge gap. So we'll look and see what we can do to that to kind of make this look more sports car because that's what this is supposed to be, a supercar. So um, got definitely plenty of leg room there. Let's see, why don't you get the shifter out of, or the charger out of there. So it looks like plenty of leg room there. Let's see if I can fit in there. I'm 5'11". Technically, I could drive this thing. Dude, I challenge you guys to a race. I'll take you guys. I'll take the Super XL, XXL and you can do whatever you want. Huh? Think you can take me? It's on. Too. All right, so let's see what's underneath these wheels. So looks like I don't want. 
Okay, so looks like we got a three quarter inch axle, or maybe it's metric with a spacer. And here's the disc brake, and he noticed that it seemed like it was kind of rubbing a little bit. No, I mean, it's, it is rubbing a little bit. Maybe we could loosen the pads or something, you know. You always got to adjust it, but up in there is the motor, but you can't really. Oh, I see, I think, why. Because we're actually resting on that um, bracket on the stool. So I bet that's what's doing it. But uh, So that'll probably be fine. Okay, so looking at it, I can see that it's got a steel frame. I know it's going to be thin wall. Um, but it's got a pretty big motor in there. Uh, I'd say it's six, seven inches in diameter. I don't really want to flip it upside down and uh scratch this thing all up but eventually we're gonna have to uh, do some videos and upgrades and stuff on this thing so um but yeah so in the dash here it's got low speed and high speed i think that that's high speed hit that red button nope so Blue is definitely high speed. And then reverse. Oh, wait. That's still going forward. Wait, what's this? Huh? Oh. So, what is that? That's on. So, like, if you go like that, it makes it noise. No. Well, we gotta maybe read the instructions, but I like how the console here has got a lot of room for, like, uh, putting your own lights and stuff. We got the battery gauge here. Oh yeah, those are lame. So, Bluetooth mode. Bluetooth, so you could connect it to your phone. I uh, haven't found where the speaker is or anything yet, but this is the volume lights. Are the lights off or on? Uh, no. They're off. No, they're off. How about now? I don't know what that light's doing. But I heard that press the brake pedal and see if the lights come on. You gotta climb up in there. Oh yeah. yeah. Brakes come on. We can drive this on the road. It's street legal. It's street legal? Yeah. You're gonna race it? No. Well, you guys just wanna drive it and we'll just see what it does? Yeah. Huh? Kendrick yeah. wants to drive it. It's raining. So it'll have to be inside here. So we're going to put this on the, they, these kids are just itching. So we're going to put this on the ground and just do forward and backwards and just see what it does. Probably check the air pressure, make sure all the wheels um, are tight. You know, you just can't assume any of that stuff. But I do see some potential for coolness. Definitely. Was there a sticker sheet or anything in there? No. No? Yeah, all right. Well, let's get the steering wheel on and all that stuff. So let's talk about the guts of this thing. The most important thing is how you put the power to the ground, right? So the tires, the wheels. Um, so what we have here are rubber tires with a tube, plastic rims, and they're held on by a six millimeter Allen head bolt. It probably wouldn't be a bad idea to Loctite these guys or at least check these, make sure that they're tight. And it comes off of a um, three quarter inch axle, it looks like, that's got a keyway. Uh, but this is a metal insert, maybe? Let's see. Yeah, it's cool. So it's got this um, little star shape, but that's steel. So you aren't going to strip that out very easily. And behind that, you have a mechanical disc brake. It's not a electric, or a, yeah, it's not a hydraulic disc brake, like on a higher end. And um, we backed it all the way off so that it wasn't rubbing. You can see where it was rubbing, dragging down the motor. Um, and as far as the motor, ta-da! You just take off the driver's side seat, and there it is. Uh, I should compare this to a Power Wheels motor. So to compare this brushless motor to a Power Wheels motor, here you go, guys. That is a direct comparison. So it is a 180-watt brushless motor, not super high, connected to a miniature 
differential axle. So this is actually a steel axle on both ends, but it's gonna be a one wheel wonder. So when you spin one forward, the other side goes backwards. So you're not gonna have a posi type action. So if this one uh, gets stuck, the other one will actually spin just like in you know a regular car. It's just called a differential. So pretty cool, pretty heavy duty. Um, looking at it, it is going to make it a little bit difficult to uh, lower this. I mean, there's probably three inches there. And what we're going to attempt to do is unbolt the axle. And we're going to flip it and put it on top and see what kind of clearance issues we have. I'm hoping that we can rotate it. Uh, we might have to do some plastic surgery. But we got to get this thing sitting right, man. It's just got to look right. Um... And if not, we'll just put it back to where factory is. Um, and as far as the steering wheel, it actually comes with its own wrench. But just so that you guys know, it takes a 12 millimeter wrench. And you just basically slide this in here. And make sure that it's small enough so that it slides in there, the wedge. And it gives it a telescoping effect where it's easy to adjust. So like for a, an adult, um, what you're going to want to do is probably that looks like it goes that way. Keep your wheels perfectly straight and then align this. And you got to have that um, triangle in there and just tighten that down. I'm holding the camera with my other hand, so I can't really do that. But I'll probably leave this up a little bit like this. Um, the mirrors are pretty easy. They just pop right in there, just a compression. Uh, the seats will take um, two screws in the back to hold those down. And the windshield goes on pretty easy too. It just pops down in there as well. So the front tire, same thing. They come up with a six millimeter Allen head bolt. And it's got dual radial bearings on the plastic rim. And it looks like it's a two piece rim that um, might click apart because it'd be sweet to take these rims off and you know do something cool with them hydro dip them or paint them or something um so here's the steering guys so it's got heinz joints and dual linkage so it's got one link coming off from the steering rod and then it's got another link that goes over to turn both tires uh, i'm not really a fan of how loose that is I'm personally going to try to uh, take up some of the slack so that when you turn the steering wheel, it, it's not as sloppy. Um, just, I don't know. I'm going to tighten it up and make sure it doesn't bind, and maybe they have it that way for a reason. But um, And then also looking at lowering this thing. So, might have to do some trimming here, which I don't think that would affect anything. And then essentially all you need to do is raise the spindle up to give it more tuck. But if you can't do the rear, there really wouldn't be much point in doing the front. But uh, we're going to do our best. And then it also doesn't have a great turning radius because it hits over there. I don't know if you guys can see that. And I'm being critical. I mean, you know, so it kind of bottoms out. So, in, in that position, it hits on the frame, and in this position, it seems to have a better turning radius, but there it doesn't turn as good, it doesn't seem like. But we're going to get it out and see if it even needs any tweaking, and all the stuff is just kind of loose, and I'm sure you want some slack, but this is a captured ball, so... It doesn't seem like this should be that, that loose. Apologize for the poor video uh, footage in there. So we're going to tighten up this front steering bolt. I just don't like how sloppy it is. You're going to need an 8 millimeter Allen head and a 17 millimeter wrench. And we're just going to tighten this up a little bit until it's smooth, but not binding. Still seems to move, so we're gonna give that a try. Okay, since we race 
go-karts, we know it's very important to have a good setup and your caster camber, toe and all that stuff adjusted correctly. So I'm taking the straight edge and I'm lining it up with the rear rim. So that I know that this is perfectly straight. It doesn't have toe in or toe out because that can affect the performance of it. So let's go over to the other side. We haven't touched this. And you can tell right away that the tire is sticking. Come over to the angle here. Now when I go to line this up, we are not even close to being straight. So we're gonna need to tighten up that steering link so that it's basically, actually in this tire, sticks out further. Look at that. I don't know if that's a rear end thing, but when I line it up here, see how it's sticking out wider? Let's see. This tire seems to be tucked in closer because it's closer to the body here. See what I'm saying? These are all the little things you can do so it doesn't scrub speed. I wonder if it's a spacer thing. Oh, you know what I bet it is? I know what it is. I bet if we loosen these four bolts, come up here, up here, cameraman, you loosen these bolts, and I bet we can slide that rear end over a little bit. We're going to try that and see if that um, evens it out. Not a huge deal. Is We are going to take the tire back off, and we're going to tighten up this hind joint so that it's straight ahead. Okay, so to straighten out that toe in, all you have to do is remove the wheel, and it's a 17 millimeter wrench, and you break the jam nut, and you turn that in. And we're just going to do, I don't know, a bunch of rotations and put it back together until we get two straight tires for max performance. Okay, so we're going to air up the tires. It says ready to here on your sidewall, just like a big kid's car. Inflate to 22 PSI, and you take off the valve cap. And what's the air pressure? So it's not even reading 5 on there, so air it up. Here's some info on the battery and the charging. So it's 24 volts and it comes with a supplied charger here. Uh, it, the stats on it are 24 volts at 1.5 amps. So this is a 14 amp hour battery. So technically it could be a 2.8 to 3 amp charger. Um, and I believe, and I'm going to test this for a future video of upgrading this, because on their other products, this charger will not stop charging. When this light turn gr turns green, it's still putting that voltage into the battery. And when you do that, it actually damages the cells. It overcharges them. And it plugs into this charge port, conveniently located under the dash. And this is great because it comes with this. If you have a second battery, you plug this into the battery and you plug it into that this spare charge port they have. And if you look real close, you can see that Zener diode in there. It looks like a teeny tiny little can of pop. It's black with a silver line on it. Well, that only allows voltage to flow in and not out. So I've done a video in the past, but I'm going to do another one specific to this, that you need to unsolder that and move the power wire over to that connector right there so that you can use a smart charger that has circuitry in it so that it can actually, the smart charger won't output voltage unless it senses voltage, if that makes sense. So you need to actually remove that diode and that is there to protect it so that voltage can't flow out from the battery, it only flows in. And this dummy transformer charger doesn't know the difference. So um, that's definitely gonna be a video we're gonna upgrade on. All right, let's talk the battery. I misspoke earlier. I just assumed that it was going to be the standard universal uh, two 12 volt, 12 amp hours in series. And it is not. It is actually one big 24 volt battery. But don't let that fool you or scare you. You guys can absolutely replace it with one of these next to each other. 
and then from the red, you're going to go to the red, but then the black is going to jump over to the next red that's in here. These are brand new uh, Mighty Max batteries. Pretty cheap. I'll put the link in the in the video, um, and you guys can actually buy this and have a backup battery. Uh, you just won't have this connector, but I'm really not a fan of these either. It's not rated for a lot of amps. Um, these have a tendency to melt. But um, anyways, so it's the exact same size, but this one is saying that it's a 24 volt, 14 amp hour, which means it can go 14 hours at one amp. So it's basically like a gas tank. So um, the other thing that I noticed is this has a resettable breaker so that if your child goes up a hill or gets like stalled, it will trip this breaker instead of melting the wire. The problem that I kind of see, I mean, it's rated for 20 amps, the controller, and this is rated at 17 amps, and then these might have a tendency to, to trip. So if the kid's like riding or going up a hill, heavy weight, and it stops, and then after a little bit you hear a click, it's this thing resetting. Uh, these are pretty easy to replace. You just unplug it and plug it in for, you know, one of equal value, 17 amps or a 20 amp. Um, but yeah, it would not be a comprehensive video review unless I talked about that because I misspoke earlier. I assumed it was these guys and it is not. So let's put this thing back together. Uh, we are going to check air pressure because these are pneumatic tires and they're already kind of low. You can feel it squishy. So we're going to air it up and take it for a spin. Decent steering radius. These rubber tires are doing the trick. Are those rain tires? Doing pretty good. If you just if you just let off, it will stop. Just let off all, let off all the way. Just let off all the way. It will automatically stop. Oh wow! I like that auto brake feature. Okay, so for comparison's sake, so you guys know, that's the Big Toys Green Country, and this is the Power Wheels Porsche GT3, and. Size-wise, they are very, very, very close. This is the biggest one on the market that I know of, um, but it definitely doesn't have the legroom. Go ahead and get in there and show them what this one looks like as far as legroom. So you see that right there? Yeah, we pressed the gas. Yeah, he can barely get his foot under there. So now I'll come over here, and you can see how the footwell actually drops down. So it is actually, I mean, I was driving it comfortably. See that? I mean, this is actually perfect for a 12-year-old right there. Um, so definitely something to consider guys. The Porsche might be as long almost, but no rubber tires, no transaxle, no brushless motor, no variable speed. It's 12 volts. But what we're going to do is we're going to race these two heads up sidewalk outlaw style. All right. Okay guys. So here's our first impression of this big toys, green country. Supercar XXL, that's a mouthful. 
But anyways, guys, I'm actually really impressed with it. Um, you saw me kind of being critical in it, but that is my job. I'm unbiased. I bought this out of my own pocket for $1,000. I want you guys to know what you're actually getting. It's actually an amazing ride-on. Uh, the only thing that was close to this was an off-road version uh, made by Peg Perigo, which is a superpower gaucho. So it was a Jeep, and it had the variable speed. It had disc brakes, but it had foam tires. It was nothing like this, um, and that was $1,000. So you're getting a lot of bang for your buck here, guys. You know, it's got working lights, um, working doors. The rubber tires are amazing. Its styling looks awesome. I mean, we can make this thing so much cooler with a rear spoiler on there, rear diffuser. Um, and you saw me doing the front wheel alignment. It definitely had a toe out issue and what it ended up being is it needed a toe in but also the rear end you can see that this tire is tucked in and this one is almost flush you see that how it's flush with that outer fender there and this one's tucked in i'd say almost three quarters or an inch uh, you can't even see it there so that's kind of where when we put the straight edge on there um, it, it just needs to be brought over the whole axle and it might just need to be oblong the way that the um, bracket is the way that they welded it on just isn't perfect you guys know where it came from but um, you know we're probably just going to leave it stock speed for now um, the things that we're going to work on first because Kidriff wanted it putting some twin turbos in there that'll be a video we are going to definitely fabricate some type of rear wing or have um, Daniel Lyles 3D print us one. And I think to make this supercar-ish, it, it, I don't know, it just needs something. Some bling, maybe a third brake light, um, probably do that up there, a little LED strip. But... Man, if I was a kid and I got this for my birthday or Christmas or just got it, I would just be in heaven. This thing is sweet. I don't know if I got pictures of this, but here's the handbrake. It's got the foot brake and it's got the variable speed. Cause there's no All right, now that you had a chance to drive this Big Toys Green Country Supercar XXL, what's your opinion of it? Yeah, we'll see. We'll, we've got the Garmin GPS uh, camera on there. We'll see if it is a 10 mile an hour car. Overall, I think it's pretty sweet. Yeah, I, I do like the lights. Those are pretty sick. Yeah. So this is it, guys. Um, yeah. I think it needs a rear wing. I think oh, it yeah. needs a rear diffuser. But those are for other videos, man. I can't wait to get my hands on some this dual, thing. Some dual turbos. Some twin turbos? Yeah. Is this a rear engine or front engine? Ooh, I like the way you think. Right there, Put right some there. twin turbos in there? Yeah. Ooh. Oh yeah, and some license plates. Because it does look like this is paint, guys. Um, overall, my impressions that if you have a child, this will be more than enough for them. But once you get a Power Wheels that goes crazy like this one over here at 25 miles an hour, and you start racing go-karts and winning trophies this is kind of going backwards but for you younger kids out there uh, this thing is awesome man I really dig it I think that it's pretty awesome it is not cheap but it is cool kid drift approved yeah all right well hey guys we're gonna end this video so give us a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe and a like on the video, and we've got more stuff coming up. It's in that box right there. It's the next unboxing video, guys. Woo! And we're pretty excited about that now that racing's over. we got to fill our off-season with some more racing. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching, and see you on the next video.